Hi everyone, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good day to every one of you. Okay, so welcome to my video. So basically, this is a continuation of a lecture video for chapter 1, uh, which is uh, basic concept of electric circuit. Okay, so basically in this video, uh, we are try to cover on the last two subtopic, which is active and passive element and then independent and dependent sources. All right. So let's go to the first subchapter, which is active and passive element. So before we go in detail, what are the difference between active element and passive element? Okay, so the first thing to do is we need to know what is the definition for the circuit element itself. Alright, so an element is actually the basic building block of circuit. So in the other word, any component in the electric circuit we call as a circuit element. Alright, so an electric circuit is simply an interconnection of the elements. Okay, so let's have a look at this figure. If you still remember, we had seen this kind of figure in the early beginning of chapter 1, right? Okay, so this electrical circuit is actually an interconnection of battery and lamp. Alright, so in this circuit, elements is present by battery and lamp. Alright. And then, circuit analysis is the process of determining voltage across the elements or the currents that are going through the elements. Okay? And then, there are two types of elements found in the electric circuit. Okay, the so first thing is a passive element and then the second thing is the active element. Okay, so from here, the lamp represents passive elements and the battery represents active elements. Okay, so now what does it mean by active elements? Okay, so an active element is capable of generating energy to other elements in a circuit. So example for the active elements is voltage source, current source, transistor, and amplifier. Okay, so for the active elements, the current will flow from terminal negative to the terminal positive. For example, we refer to this circuit, okay? So this uh, symbol represents your voltage source and then this symbol represents your current source. Okay, so uh, there is a notation of current there. So the current flow from negative to the positive side. Okay, so the current going through this side. Same goes to this current source, okay? So this is positive terminal, this is a negative terminal. So the current flow from negative to positive terminal, okay? Next, how about the passive element? Okay, so the passive element is capable of absorbing energy from other elements in a circuit. So example for passive element is resistor, capacitor, inductor, and diode. So for a passive element, the current will flow from terminal positive to the terminal negative. Okay, so for example, we refer to this circuit again. Okay, so this uh this this element represent your passive element, which is this is your in that sorry this is your impedance. Okay, so this is your impedance, so it also represent the passive element. Okay, so the orient the the orientation of the current is from this side to this side. Okay, so you might see that the current flow from terminal positive to the terminal negative. Same goes to here. The current six ampere flow from terminal positive to the terminal negative. Okay. Okay, so next we go to the last subtopic which is independent and dependent source. Okay, so what does it mean by the electric source actually? Okay, so generally the active elements are voltage or current source that deliver power to the circuit that connected to them. So basically it means that the electric source with it can be either voltage source or current source. Okay, so this electric source is considered as an active element where the electric source will be able to deliver the power to the circuit that connected to it. Alright, so there are two kinds of source. Okay, the first one we call as an independent source and then the second one we call as a dependent source. Okay, so let's have a look what is the difference between independent source and dependent source. So now we go to the definition of independent source. Okay, so an ideal independent source is actually an active element that provides a specified voltage or current. Okay, the keywords here, it's provide specified voltage or current that is completely independent of other circuit variable. 
So in the other words, it means that, okay, let's say you have uh, given a voltage source with a value of 5 volt maybe. Or maybe your current source is said to be 5 ampere. So the value of the voltage or the value of the current source will remain the same. And then it is completely does not depending and does not rely on any other circuit variable. Okay, understand? Alright, so figure 7, re, uh, figure seven represent the symbols that been used for independent voltage sources. Okay, so in A, okay, in A usually you have a round shape like this and then you have a polarity positive negative. Okay, this is used for constant voltage or maybe a time varying voltage. Okay, so for B, Sometimes it will be a uh, draw in term of cell battery like this. So usually it is used for constant voltage or we can call it as a DC voltage. All right. Okay. And then uh, this is a symbol for independent current source. Okay. So for current source, we draw it in term of a uh, circle like this and then we put a um, arrow like this. Okay. So for voltage, usually we put in term of polarity positive negative, but for the current source, we put in term of the um, arrow. Alright. Okay, next. The independent sources are usually designated by circle shape symbol. Okay, remember, for independent source, we use circle shape symbols. Okay, so usually this is for current source. Okay, you see there is a round shape or circle shape and then you have a arrow. So, meaning that it is for current. Or maybe you have a, a round shape with the polarity plus minus. So, this is represent for voltage source. Or the other way, okay, this is uh, the other way on how to draw the current source as well, alright? Okay, Okay. so we had done with the topics on independent source. So now in this slide, we are going to see what does it mean by dependent source. Okay, so by definition, an idle dependent source, or maybe we can call it as control source, is an active element in which the source quantity is controlled by another voltage or current. Okay, so the keyword here is the quantity is controlled by another voltage or current. So in the other words, it means that your voltage source or your current source does not have a fixed value. And then the value will be always changed according to the another voltage or another current. Okay, so in figure 9, Okay, this, uh, the, the figure represents the symbols that being used for dependent sources. Okay, so for A, this is the symbol used for dependent voltage source where you have a diamond shape like this and then you have a polarity positive minus. So this is a symbol for voltage dependent source. And then for B, this is the symbol used for dependent current source where you have a diamond shape like this and then you have a arrow shape inside of the diamond. All right. Okay, so please take note that dependent source are usually designated by diamond shape symbols. Okay, if you still remember for independent source, we draw it in term of round shape. But for dependent source, we draw it in term of diamond shape. Okay, so since the control of the dependent source is achieved by a voltage or current of some other element in the circuit, okay, and the source can be either voltage source or current source, so, there are four possible types of dependent source. Okay, so the first one is we call it as a, okay, so uh, let's have a look. Here is the current source because you have an arrow, right? But the value of current IS is equal to alpha VX. So, meaning that the value of current source is depending on voltage at X. Okay, so this is called as a voltage control current source. Okay, so the, 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 the short form is VCCS. Okay, so the second type is current control, current source. Meaning that here is your current source because you have a arrow inside. So this is a current source. And then the value of current source depending on the current at X. Okay, so that's why we call current control, current source. Okay, and then the next we have voltage control, voltage source, meaning that here you have a diamond shape with polarity positive negative so it means this is the voltage source and then the value of the voltage source depending on the um, voltage at x okay so that's why we call vcvs okay so the last type is a 
current control voltage source okay so this is a diamond shape with positive negative polarity so this is a voltage source and then the value of voltage is depending on the current at x so that's why we call it current control voltage source okay okay so next let's have a look at the following circuit in which we try to employ the voltage control voltage source or we can call it as a VCVS into the circuit okay so you have a resistor two resistor here parallel to each other and then VX represent voltage at this resistor okay and then your voltage source you have a um, voltage control voltage source okay so now vs is equal to dependent voltage source and then the value of the voltage source is equal to mu vx where mu is the constant value and vx represent voltage across other elements in the circuit so in this case vx represent voltage at the this resistor okay Alright, next we go to the voltage control current source. Okay, so this is how you connect your VCCS inside the circuit. Okay, so your current source. Okay, so now you have a IS is equal to dependent current source. So your IS is equal to alpha VX. So in this case, VX represent voltage at this resistor. And then alpha is your constant value. Okay, so next we have a look at the current control voltage source. So in this case, you have a IX. IX is a current that flow through this circuit. Okay. And then your VS, which is your dependent voltage source, is equal to gamma IX. So in this case, gamma is a constant value and IX is the current flow at the other element. Okay. And then finally, the last type is the current control current source. Okay. So in this case, you have a current source here. So IS is your dependent current source and then IS is equal to beta IX. So in this case, IX is equal to the current that flow through the other element. So and then your beta is a constant value. Alright, okay, so now let's do some uh, calculation. Okay, for example, 1.7. So uh, you need to calculate the power supply or absorbed by each of the element in above circuit. So meaning that here you have one element, two element three elements and fourth element so each of the elements you need to calculate your p so p is equal to i multiplied with v and then based on the p value that you get you need to determine whether the power is being supplied or being absorbed all right okay so now how to solve the question okay so we just go one by one for the first element okay so for p1 the current of 5 ampere flow into the negative terminal okay so that's why we are referring to this passive sign convention where the formula is given by p is equal to negative iv okay so for the topic of passive sign convention so please refer to the previous video part 3 okay so for by using this formula so p1 is equal to negative i1 v1 so in this case i is 5 ampere v is 20 volt and then finally i get negative 100 watt so from here you get the value is negative so that's why element is supplying power all right so for the second and third element okay so for this element the current is flowing into the positive terminal okay so into the positive terminal so that's why the passive sign convention that we are using is p is equal to plus iv so by using the formula p2 is equal to 5 multiply with 12 so i got 60 watt and then for p3 6 multiply with 8 so i got 48 watt okay so based on these two value you get the positive value so that's why you, your element is absorbing power okay okay so next we go to the fourth element which is your current control current source okay so from here you see that the current going into the negative terminal so that's why we, we are using this formula okay and then uh, you just need to substitute the value. So, P4 is equal to negative I4 V4. So, in this case, I is equal to 0 0.2 I. Okay, 0 0.2 I. And then, I is referring to here. I is equal to 5 ampere. Okay, and then, the voltage of this element is same as per this because it connected in parallel. So, that's why V here is equal to 8 volt. And then, after that, you just substitute the value. And then, finally, you get P4 is equal to negative 8 watt. Okay, so... Since you have the negative value, so now your element is supplying the power. So that's all for now. Thank you for watching and thank you for your time. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.